In the 2,000 years that have passed since Christ's resurrection, the church has grown and accumulated thousands of wonderful stories. One from the second century involves a tiny church community, a battle of waters, and a very powerful archangel. We have talked before about the church calendar and how every single day of the year marks an important saint, a Bible story, or a Christian festival. The calendar also marks important historical stories and events. On the 6th of September, one of the events the church remembers is one from the 2nd century at the city of Colossae in modern-day Turkey. If the name Colossae sounds familiar to you, it is because it is the home of the Colossians, to whom Paul wrote one of his letters that is one of the books of the Bible. The same community to whom Paul wrote in the 1st century was still there in Colossae and active in the 2nd century. This activity and the growing number of converts was helped by a miraculous spring. This spring of water was said at the time to have been opened by the Archangel Michael and these waters were a place of miraculous healing for Christians and for people interested in Christianity and as a result many people were converting and joining the Christian faith. But that is only where the story begins. Saint Michael the Archangel was much loved to the Christians at Colossae. He was a saint to whom they felt very close. Michael the Archangel is known by the early church as the captain of the Lord's army. He is an angel of war, an angel of battle, an angel of defense and of protection. He has several very dramatic appearances in the Old Testament and the early church fathers see several other references to him in the Old Testament where he is not explicitly mentioned. Saint Michael the Archangel is a servant of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament he appeared to Joshua on the eve of the famous battle at Jericho and here in the 2nd century he appeared at Colossae to a saint named Archippus. Archippus was an ascetic saint. He was a saint of strong spiritual discipline and he lived not far from the spring that the Christians were using. And of course this attracted a lot of hatred from the pagans who were really tired of the number of their own followers who were joining this new Christian religion. And the local pagans decided on a plot to erase the Christian community there at Colossae. These haters of Christianity hatched a plot that was sort of a battle of waters. They sought to divert two small rivers from higher ground that would then flood the spring used by the Christians. One of the purposes of this was to destroy the Christian presence there at the Holy Spring. Another was to destroy and kill Archippus, who lived not far from it. But the third was of a spiritual and symbolic nature, which was that if they could direct their water at the Christian water, then this would pollute that which the Christians were using. It would show the strength of the waters of paganism against the waters of Christianity. It was fighting water with water. They were trying to desecrate the Holy Spring. They were trying to establish their own power over the Christians. From this point, the story goes something like this. It was the night before the 6th of September. Archippus was asleep. He knew that there were plots afoot, but he didn't know about these two rivers converging. High up in the hills, the makeshift dam that the pagans had constructed to build up the tidal wave of water was ready. The waters had built up to the perfect crescendo. Shortly after midnight, they pulled the boulders to allow the force of water to come crashing through and down the hillside. Archippus was woken up by a voice descending from the heavens. And the voice of the Archangel Michael said to Archippus, come forth come out and witness the amazing power of God. Now that reads very dramatically, but this is really the captain of the Lord's army saying to a man nearby, come and check this out. Archippus emerges from the cave in which he's been sleeping to see a tidal wave of mud, debris, fallen trees and water pouring down the hillside towards his beloved spring. But there, standing on a great boulder near the spring, is an archangel the Archangel Michael himself, here to save the day. The Archangel raises his right hand and makes the sign of the cross over the stone. He raises his spear and slams it into the rock at his feet. The rock is split in two and the shockwave caused by the force of an angelic spear rips through the earth and opens a fissure in the rock. The flood of water comes crashing down and is funneled into this gaping hole in the earth. The Archangel Michael ascends to heaven and Archippus stands there watching as the water drains safely away. The spring has not been touched. The power of God has been made pretty clear 
and the battle of the waters is won by Christ through his servant, the Archangel Michael. This moment also calls to mind a beautiful verse in the Psalms. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you, they were afraid, the depths also trembled. From this point forth in history, the city is no longer ever known as Colossae. It becomes known as Honai, an old Greek word that basically means funnel or an opening because of this famous sinkhole that pulled these two rivers into the earth. The Christian community continued to flourish here in Honai and miracles continued to be reported at the Holy Spring. The city of Honai was situated right on what was later the pilgrimage routes from Constantinople to Jerusalem and in the 4th century Saint Helena built a church over the site of the spring. The story of the miracle of the waters there at Honai is a much beloved story amongst Orthodox Christians today. Many churches and monasteries have been named after this specific event. One of the most famous was the Chudov Monastery, which was destroyed by the Bolsheviks in the 20th century. The Trudov Monastery had been operating at that point for almost 500 years. Trudov Monastery literally means the Monastery of the Miracle. It was founded in the 14th century, and according to local legend, it was at this monastery in the 15th century that a Father Isador invented a drink that would eventually become known as vodka, a word that actually means little water. The Miracle at Honai is remembered by the church every single year on September the 6th. It is a day that we remember a story of deliverance, a story of the power of God, it is a day that we remember the Archangel Michael. He is a fellow member of our church. He is a servant of Jesus Christ, a savior that often sends people and circumstances our way. And sometimes Jesus may indeed send one of his most powerful angels. Hope you enjoyed this very exciting story. If you could hear the sound of the rain, we're sorry about that, but it did sort of seem appropriate that it was raining on a day where we were telling a story about water. As to what water we are drinking, it is of course tea. And it is Assam tea, which is from India. It is a delicious tea, and it is normally the central ingredient for breakfast teas because it's very dark, very strong, and very rich in flavor.